joins us now. She's a journalist and president of the Council for the National Interest Foundation. That's an independent non-profit organization providing information and analysis on the Middle East and its relationship to the United States. When President Obama takes the podium at the APAC conference, will he be campaigning for the U.S.'s strategic interests or will he be campaigning for campaign contributions for his re-election? The second. He'll be campaigning for his re-election. Uh, domestic politics will be driving what he does, sadly. So we shouldn't expect any surprises, and perhaps not even a mention of 1967 again, by the, by the looks of it. Uh, maybe not. Uh, you know, he, he was attacked for that. It wasn't really brand new. George Bush, uh, George W. Bush had talked about returning to the 1949 armistice line, which is just the sa basically the same thing. But, but how can it be that still an American president cannot be, um, is not powerful enough to address APAC in an honest manner. I mean, is that really the case, or is that the stuff of conspiracy that is sometimes... Sadly, it's really the case. Uh, now, most Americans don't know that, are very unfamiliar with this. As you might notice, uh, American networks don't cover it the same way that Al Jazeera does. Most Americans don't know the amount of our tax money that goes to Israel, for example, far more than to any other country. We're not aware of that. Most Americans don't have strong, strong views on Israel-Palestine. Uh, given that situation, when you have a very powerful focused, well-funded lobby that has a track record of removing people from office, destroying their careers, we've seen several cases lately, then it drives the issue. Um, what of these alternatives then? I mean, APAC, it has to be always said there, isn't necessarily reflective of um, all of Jewish opinion or Israeli public opinion even. It, it does mm -hmm. seem to be a, an extreme. So we have these organizations like J Street. Mm -hmm. What sort of alternative do they give? Uh, well, there are even stronger ones than J Street. R really, J Street is, is it, many people feel, a, a sort of nicer face on APAC. Uh, how, wh how would you back that up? They, they present themselves as, as a very different face. They do, but when you look at their actual actions, what things they support, what things they oppose. Just some examples. The UN report by Goldstone, which was quite a good report about the Israeli targeting of civilians in Gaza, a strong report that APAC opposed, did not want the, the U.S. Congress to allow it to go forward and J Street joined them in that same action. Uh, uh, another uh, uh, divestment resolution at the University of California, Berkeley, uh, a sort of symbolic but s very significant case. Again, we have J Street on the same side as APAC. Um, for all of the rage of Mr. Netanyahu, though, it's been a pretty good, good week. How, how would you, I mean, in the sense that he seems to have got pretty much everything he wanted, wh mm -hmm. why do you think um, Mr. Netanyahu was so angry, appeared so angry, and do you think he will uh, transmit that anger at APAC in the coming days? Well, I, I think uh, there might be something very interesting going on. Uh, Obama is being targeted quite viciously by the conservative, especially the far right. And I think Obama is playing to the, I think that Netanyahu is playing to the far right, in which Obama is being portrayed as giving everything away, being too hard on poor Israel. Uh, a departure from the real facts, but people are, are considerably misled in this country. So, 